Good afternoon, sisters, and welcome to our Relief Society and Young Women Devotional. Conducting this meeting is yours truly, Sister Cherry Vesilia, under the direction of our Bishop, Bishop Pablo Patotoy. To start, we'll have our opening hymn on hymn number 298, Home Can Be a Heaven on Earth, and the opening prayer will be given to us by Sister Charity Hildren. for our thing for today, thank you that we can still be learning about our gospel, and we thank you for everything you've given us, and we ask you that the COVID thing will be gone, and that we'll be able to learn something today, and we ask you to be safe, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We are blessed to have two speakers for today. First to speak is Sister Karen Libre of the Young Women Organization. She will then be followed by Sister Hazel Hildreth of the Relief Society Organization. One of the best ways to prepare ourselves to face life um, successfully is to develop faith in Jesus Christ. Um, a, a faith is a belief in something that can't be seen or proved by scientific methods. Faith means believing that Jesus Christ lives and loves us and he will bless us if we do what is right if we trust him and follow his teachings um, we will be happy our faith in Christ jesus can grow by learning about him we belong to the church of god and follow his examples we are commanded to do so therefore we have faith in him and if we obey or follow his examples we uh, we have trust in him we have faith in His great sacrifice which will enable us to return to our heavenly home if we prepare ourselves. Because of our current situation, we have coronavirus, so we are doing our sacrament services at home. We are doing virtual gatherings or meetings, or we spend more time with our social media, um, our small businesses, and sometimes we may neglect or we neglect intentionally our responsibilities at church, our callings, and our covenant with the Lord. We are too focused with what's happening in the social media right now. We are too focused with, what happen with what's happening in the world. 
Um, with that, how can our homes cultivate our faith? Cultivate means grow, to raise, or to nurture. Children have a natural faith in anything that parents would tell them. If they learn about Jesus at an early age, they will have a simple faith that He lives and that He loves them. This will help to bring His Spirit into their lives. That is why we are commanded by the Lord to teach the younger generation or the children the first principle of the gospel, which is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ while they are young. Their faith grows as we provide opportunities for them to pray during this magkaon lang, ana, or to learn about the Savior and apply faith to their lives. By praying, studying about the Savior and living His teachings, you will know for ourselves that you can trust in Him or we can trust in Him. We will know that following Him will bring us happiness and peace. Then, when we encounter difficulties, you will have the faith to keep His commandments, knowing in every personal way that He will never let us down. If we want our families to have faith in Jesus Christ, um, they must see us praying, study the gospel, and follow the teachings of the Savior. I know an example is much more important than anything we can tell them. The words we say will have more meaning or more impact when children see our examples. Successfully building faith in our homes will help us grow more in faith until we become strong enough to face the temptations and trials in our lives. And I was reminded by the quote or the line in hymn number 298, Parents teach and lead while the children, children honor and obey. Being a mother isn't an easy calling. I adore and was amazed by the, mother, the powers of the mothers in rearing children. I am not still a mother, but I appreciate every mother in the world because I appreciate my mother. And then, um, oh no, they say home um, is the best place to learn. Then it will be if, we'll be if each of us will strengthen our relationship with our family members and especially with our parents. If we listen to what, we, what they say or obey their good instructions, I, including the new gener generations, will not lose out of track. Uh, I know home can be a heaven on earth. I know if we have faith in God, all the trials we will be facing cannot bring us down. Instead, we will learn and we will grow. I know that having faith in Jesus Christ is very important and that we will be guided if we have faith. And I know that this corona thing will end and we will learn out of it this. And I am so grateful by for our prophet today, President Russell M. Nelson, which continually um, receive instructions and revelations from Heavenly Father. And I am so grateful for that. And I am so grateful that for the atonement of Jesus Christ na nag-sacrifice siya para sa itong mga sala and I know nga kana, we will be um, forgiven sa itong mga sala and I know na if we follow the examples of Je the examples shown by Jesus Christ is we can be a light in the world and I know all these things is true and I live this in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Good afternoon sisters my topic for my talk is home as a sanctuary of faith. What is a sanctuary? A sanctuary is a sacred place. It is a shrine, a place of safety, a place of refuge, or a holy place. Before the pandemic happened, our prophet, President Nelson, announced to shorten our Sunday services schedules. He wanted us to focus more on our own home and to study the Come Follow Me program in our own home. Our leaders and prophet counseled us to have a daily personal and family prayer a daily family scripture study 
and a weekly family home evening and to share our testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are constantly doing these things, we promote an uplifting environment and the Spirit is present at all times. So when the adver adversity comes knocking at our door, we will know and be ready to combat negative forces. There is a quotation that I like, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. During the pandemic started, we were in the Philippines and on the last week of March 2020, the Philippine government announced that we will be locked down due to virus, due to coronavirus. The government advised us to stay at home. Offices are closed, department stores are closed, our church are closed, temples are closed. The only thing that were open are essentials like grocery stores, pharmacies, and hospitals. Our home was a sanctuary for our family. In our home, we did a lot of little things that lead to big things. But if we failed or neglected to do the little things, it can lead to bigger problems. In our home, we keep our surroundings clean. We clean the area that is cluttered. We sweep the floor often. We make our beds neat and tidy. It doesn't mean spotless, but neat and tidy. Because we believe cleanliness is next to godliness. Remember the Lord said, Mine house is a house of order. We also take care of our needful things. We prepare food and water. We plant some vegetables in a pots. We don't have a big yard or garden. We just have to put in a bottle or pots. And we also start our day with personal and family prayer. We read the scriptures in the morning one chapter to two chapters a day and on sunday we had our sacrament and sunday school at home we listen and sing church hymns and during weekdays we make more activities with our kids or games to replace in social media Charity and kind, they also have chores and assignments. They have to wake up early morning to have a scripture study with us. They have to exercise, run, dribbling the ball because they play basketball or they play sports. When you play sports, you need to be physically fit. They have also to study their academic lesson like math, science, and other subjects. They have also online voice lessons and they also need to practice their guitar. As a mother and a wife, I'm the one preparing the meals and cooking and washing clothes cleaning the house my husband's my husband not my husband's my husband prepared the lesson for our Sunday meeting and he also prepared our daily scripture studies as a family we need to sit down together and make a list a list the ways you can make your home a holy place or as a sanctuary of faith. Make standards for home to keep them sacred and allow them to be a house of the Lord. Sometimes we may fall short in reaching our standards. 
we also allow room for mistakes as a human we can make mistake we make mistakes our kids makes mistake i make mistakes my husband makes mistake we need to learn to forgive ourselves and forgive others even we have best intentions to create our home as a sanctuary of faith we may fall short that's why we need to forgive others what happening in the world this time we need peace in our home and refuge from the world we need to remember to make our home as a sanctuary of faith and i leave these things in the name of jesus christ amen we are grateful for the messages of our two speakers this afternoon. And to close this devotional, we will now hear a message from Sister Jenny Galay as our concluding speaker. Then after her talk, our closing hymn is on hymn number 263, Go Forth with Faith, and the closing prayer will then be given to us by Sister Bevelyn Tanza. In the October 2018 General Conference, President Russell M. Nelson encouraged members of the Church to transform their homes into sanctuaries of faith. Why? That is because our homes can be fortresses against the evils of the world. Thus, our home is being threatened and challenged more today than ever before. With the evils going on around in our world today, homes should be our sanctuary of faith. In the Articles of Faith, chapter 1 verse 1, it says, We believe that the first principles and ordinances of the gospel are, first, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want your family to have faith in Jesus Christ, they must see you praying. They must see you reading the scripture and following the teachings of the Savior. Example is much more important than anything you can tell them. The words you say will have more meaning when your children see your example. Like the 2,000 young warriors of Hillman who said, we do not doubt. Our mothers knew it. That great faith has been, which has been shown, was molded in the four walls of their homes. The following are suggestions to transform our home into a sanctuary of faith by Sister Turner. The first one is paint a picture. As a family, you have to sit together and make a list of all the ways you can make your home to be a holy place. For example, from the way you talk to each other, the way you approach each other, or maybe how or what music are you going to listen to, and all of these details matter. Once you have all of these agreed, then the goal is much more easier to reach. Second, it's not just for one day in a week. If you attempt to create a special sanctuary, one day of the week is far different from the home environment the other six days, and it won't go well, most likely for sure. Going from one extreme to another would be difficult on a weekly basis, but if you maintain a high standard of behavior and surroundings all week long, the transition will be natural. Third, stay on the offense. Make sure you are constantly doing things to promote an uplifting environment so the spirit is present all the time. When the adversary comes knocking at your door, then you're very ready to combat negative forces. Elder Scott mentioned that the prophetic counsel to have daily personal and family prayer, daily personal and family scripture study, and weekly family home evening are the essential weight-bearing practices or beams in the construction of a Christ-centered home. So without these, it will be very difficult to find a desired and much-needed peace and refuge from the world. Fourth, cleanliness is next to godliness. The Lord say, mine house is a house of order. So we obey these by keeping our physical surroundings neat and tidy. So remember, parents, I did not say spotless. We know our home cannot constantly stay in the pristine condition like what we see in the temple. However, we can try to do a little better in the area of cleaning up, like the clutter that we see, or maybe sweeping the floor more often, or even making our beds. Either way, if the family member knows that there is a need for organization, so for sure, they will probably be more motivated to keep it in good condition. Five, let music set the mood. Other Oak said that music is an effective way to worship our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. We should use hymns and we need spiritual strength and inspiration. And number six, filling the technology void. 
less technology is probably one of the hallmarks of a sanctuary of faith. If we don't have a plan for what we're going to do when we pause our screen time, it's going to be useless because for sure, we're just going to go back to Facebook and other social media accounts. So the best way to address this is to make a list of activities that we can use to replace social media time. For example, um, writing in your journal, reading the scripture, maybe visiting your families or chatting with your loved ones and asking how their day go or maybe cultivating a talent that you have neglected for a long time, like music or arts or the woodworking or even other small little things that you have neglected. And number seven, allow room for a mistake. We may fall short, brothers and sisters, in reaching our standards to create a sanctuary of faith, but that doesn't mean our home can't stay a place for refuge. Elder Russell Pollard stated, your homes may not always be spotlessly clean nor the children perfectly behave but they are a place in which family members clearly love each other and the spirit of the lord is felt by those who visit so remember a sanctuary of faith is many things but it is not a sanctuary of perfection it is a sanctuary of safety a sanctuary of trying a sanctuary of love in the midst of all our worldly flaws and that truly is a holy place by sharing faith building experiences with your family members you will help them grow in faith until they become strong enough to successfully face the temptations and trials in their own lives i know brothers and sisters that are Father in heaven and Jesus Christ wants us to have a home where small miracles happen each day, where we can cultivate and strengthen our faith. I am praying that each member's home will become a true sanctuary of faith, where the Spirit of the Lord may dwell. I know that Heavenly Father loves us so much, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we uh, thank Thee for this wonderful Sabbath day that was given unto us. We thank Thee, Heavenly Father, for all the speakers that we've heard this afternoon. We thank Thee for the Holy Spirit who guides us and protects us all the time. We thank Thee as well for 
the protection and we are grateful for the gospel who helped us to remember the covenants that we have covenanted with thee. This time we pray that may that we be able to um, apply the gospel that we've heard and be able to share it to others as well and guide us and help us to be able to be strong and always be prepared for whatever um, calamities will come and we ask thee that may thou continually bless each um, family members of the Busai word and we love the heavenly father and this we humbly ask and pray in the name of thy son jesus christ amen